What is going on guys, Sajjots here and today I'm back with a ranking video for Chainsaw Man where I'll be explaining and placing in order all Devil Hunters in terms of strength and abilities. Initially I wanted to cover all Devil Hunters and Devils together but I found that it would be much better structured if I only keep the Devils who fall under the Devil Hunter category in the video. So with that being said, not every character will be involved in this ranking. Only major characters and ones that we have had a decent showcase of their power for me to rank honestly. Like who the hell would want to see me place for the characters like this and this on the ranking. But due to the nature of the video and how ambiguous a ranking for Chainsaw Man is because of how a lot of the powers work and scale in the Chainsaw Man world, obviously there will be differing opinions between me and the viewer, so be sure to express your thoughts down below. Also feel free to check out some other videos on the channel if you end up enjoying this one and let's get things started. Oh yeah and this video will contain massive manga spoilers for Chainsaw Man. So first up we have the most useless person on this list due to the fact that they did virtually nothing in the series which is why I have her placed in dead last and that's Sugihagi. Sugihagi is a fiend that is a part of Kwang Shi's group and honestly there's not that much to say about her because besides from running away from the chaos taking place during the international assassins arc and dropping Kwang Shi's head off a building, she literally did nothing. I mean she did get decapitated by you know who if that adds any value to her character. But yeah, almost everything is unknown about her, we don't even know what kind of fiend she is. But I added her to the list since she's part of Kwang Shi's group and it wouldn't feel right to miss out on any of them. Next on the list we have another one of Kwang Shi's girlfriends, Ping Si. Now Ping Si, just like the other fiends associated with Kwang Shi, doesn't have that much info on her. But she definitely has one of the most useful abilities in the entire verse and if her ability was to passively be in the hands of a certain someone on this list, I think we definitely could have seen more versatile usage of devil powers in Chainsaw Man in a what if sort of scenario. And that's not to say there isn't already versatility in that aspect. So Ping C's ability is Contract Perception, which as the name suggests allows Ping C to view the contracted devils of humans, which is a valuable ability to have due to the fact people in Chainsaw Man always keep their contracts to themselves so as not to be at a disadvantage, since this isn't JJK where revealing your hand can help you turn the tide of battle after all. So Ping C transforms her eel-like hair into a monocle and by gazing through it she can view another person's contracted devils. Now this isn't the only function of her powers because when using this ability on Kashibe, she could also tell he didn't have much of his body left to sacrifice for contracts. However, whether she can disclose this specific information I just mentioned instantly or whether she could genuinely see Kishibe's bare body through his clothes and came to that conclusion isn't clear. But with that being said, Ping Si definitely doesn't see much of the fighting type and I think her abilities are a testament to that, which is why I have her placed here on the list. Next we have Kusakabe. Kusakabe is one of the devil hunters who were assigned with the mission of protecting Denji from the incoming threat of the international assassins. So going off of that, it shows that he was a very capable devil hunter. Kusakabe is a very cautious and stick to the rules type of guy and he takes his job very seriously. He's contracted with the stone devil and by creating a special circle and standing inside of it, Kusakabe has the ability to petrify incoming enemies and turn them into stone by blowing through his hand while inside the circle. And it was made very clear that this ability can only affect so many enemies as Kusakabe starts to panic when a horde of doors burst through the front door. Also it seems any material is valid to use as a source for drawing the circle so it's not any special substance that makes his powers work is actually the pattern. And I'm saying this because looking back at the encounter with the darkness devil, he tried drawing the circle with the blood from his severed arm, so I'm assuming that's the case. And although his ability to turn people to stone seems strong, I think it has far too many weaknesses like drawing the circle and being confined to using the ability only in the circle, hence why he's so low on the list since it's too specific and not versatile enough. Following up from Kusakabe, we once again have another one of Kwang Shi's girlfriends and I promise guys the next one after this isn't going to be Kwang Shi or her affiliates, but we have Long. Now Long really didn't showcase much during the time she was present in the series, but she is the only one of Kwang Shi's fiends that we got to see a bit of action with in the fighting department. The type of fiend that she is is unknown, though she has been speculated to be the dragon fiend based on the small information we were given, also with her abilities consisting of being able to breathe fire. So pairing this up with the fact she has horns, I wouldn't say it was a crazy stretch to say that she would be the dragon fiend, although this isn't confirmed. And she got this placement on my list due to the fact she seems like the best fighter amongst the other girlfriends at Kwang Shi and her fire breathing ability appears to be quite powerful. Next up on the list we have Kobeni Higashiyama, who is one of the main members of Special Division 4. Kobeni is a 20 year old human girl and besides her relationship with her family, home life and the fact she's a character whose pain and suffering is literally used for the enjoyment of the audience, we really don't know much about her. And when I say this, I mean in terms of her powers and abilities. Since Kobeni's contracted devil, as said in the words of herself, is a secret. The usually timid and shy Kobeni has definitely shown promise at certain moments within the series, with the most memorable, I guess, being the fight during the Katana Man arc. But it seems that she mainly shows her promise when either motivated or angry, as she was able to outmaneuver and pressure both Akane Sawatari and Katana Man after killing the person responsible for her co-worker's death. 
since he ended up shielding her from gunfire. Kobeni has been shown to have superhuman agility and she would also later once again best Akane Saratari by sneaking up behind her undetected and having a knife to her throat which led to her committing suicide as Akane was completely cornered. Kobeni has been called talented by Himeno who is her mentor and a well seasoned devil hunter and given the fact she survived to the end of the series considering how many bodies have dropped in Chainsaw Man definitely counts for something and whether that's purely due to her devil ability or not is still 100% speculation at this point but nonetheless if we ever do learn what devil she is contracted with I'm sure we will all be making faces like this. However due to there being so many unknowns about Kobeni at this point I placed her here on this list but I'm sure if we ever get to see her fight seriously one day she would be much higher. Now we have yet another wild card on this list and it's Miss Halloween herself Cosmo also known as the Cosmo Fiend. So Cosmo is the last one of Kuang Shi's girlfriends appearing on this list until we reach Kuang Shi herself and she's a bit of a weird one because honestly with the right setup I'm pretty sure her power would allow her to beat anyone on this list because it's insanely broken. Cosmo has the ability to force a person to gain total understanding of everything in the world and as a result they basically become unable to function properly. We saw her use this full power Halloween technique on an immobile Santa Claus in the International Assassin's Arc and upon activation Cosmo and her target enter a library which contains all the information present in the universe. And once Cosmos said target gains understanding of everything in the universe, we can only think of Halloween until they die. Hence why Santa Claus could only say Halloween and her and all the connected dolls to her are technically in an incapacitated state as that's all they can do after falling victim to Cosmos power. So now that I've explained Cosmos ability, you can see why I said she's a bit of a wild card on this list because assuming she can get off her ability, she would be able to defeat pretty much anyone. However, when she initially used this technique in the manga, it seemed like she needed a few seconds to initially charge and launch the attack and I feel like in the presence of someone who wasn't immobile like Santa Claus, they wouldn't even give her a chance to unleash her attack, especially when they have no idea what she can do. And also since she's shown no real battle feats in terms of fighting speed etc, I opted to put her at the lower half of the list instead of the top. Although no one can deny she has one of the most broken abilities to date in Chainsaw Man. And I also forgot to mention that during the brief time we had with Kuang Shi's group before the arc really started to kick off, there were two instances where we saw this ability used by Cosmo in a way more watered down manner. One being on the driver and the second being with the waiter serving them in the restaurant and this was only by her saying the words Halloween. Nonetheless Cosmo is definitely one of the most dangerous on this list regardless of her position and I just wanted to make that abundantly clear. Next up we have Prince the Spider Devil who embodies the fear of spiders. As expected Prince has similar attributes to a spider and she is one of those types of devils which are slightly friendlier with humans and we know this as devils who have more human like appearances tend to be more cooperative and friendly with humans. So taking this from a real world standpoint with arachnophobia being a massive thing worldwide it's clear that Prince is a very strong devil. I mean she would even be in special division 4 if she wasn't but honestly we didn't get to see too much from Prince in this series besides from her using her 8 legs to decapitate and pierce through the zombie devil army instantly, submerging through the ground and her being able to summon Makima during the trip to hell. So there's just too many unknowns with Prince for me to rank her high on the list though deep down judging from the assignment she was given by Makima and the I guess trust between the two to a degree I'd assume she would be stronger than some others I'm gonna have on this list but there's just enough evidence to prove it. But she did almost get a drop on the darkness devil, at least that's how it looked anyway, so that definitely has to count for something. Now next on the list we have the one and only shark boy, well I guess shark man is more accurate, Beam himself. So Beam is the shark fiend and he is part of special division 4's devil hunting squad. Also he's the number one follower of Lord Chainsaw, also known as Denji or Pochita. And Beam's abilities range relatively far of what you normally expect from a regular shark. Beam is able to swim through solid objects as if they were like water easily which is an ability that has come in handy many times within the series as we've seen him traverse walls and floors in this manner to either flee or get the drop on his enemies and though his intangibility is strong, it's not as strong as someone like Mirio from My Hero Academia's permeation or Obito's Kamui in Naruto as he's never been able to use this technique to let incoming attacks pass through him. His intangibility only applies to him when he is travelling and if he had more applications to this ability and was more versatile, he definitely wouldn't be this low on this list. In addition to this, Beam is one of the only fiends in the series that is able to undergo full devil transformation. When Beam transforms, his head turns into a giant shark's head that looks rather menacing if I do say so myself and when he transforms his power increases significantly. Beam is definitely one of the toughest fiends around, like his durability is honestly insane and his involvement in the fights taking place during the Bomb Girl and International Assassin's Arc are clearly a testament to his strength. So coming in after Beam we have Himeno who is part of the Special Division 4 squad and alongside Aki she served as a superior to the other members in the group. 
Jimeno has a contract with the ghost devil and she is able to use this power in exchange for feeding the ghost devil her right eye. So for those who didn't know that information, no it wasn't just a fashion statement with the eye patch, there's a valid reason for it. But it does look good on her. When using the ghost devil's power, Jimeno can manifest the ghost devil's arm and use it to damage or subdue her opponent. This technique is insanely strong in my opinion, as the ghost devil's arm is intangible and invisible, so opponents can't stop the attack or anticipate it, as we saw with the eternity devil and when she taught power a little lesson. Alongside being able to manifest the ghost devil's arm, at the cost of a large sacrifice, which was her whole body, Jimeno is able to summon the ghost devil in its entirety, which looks, well, like this. And the increase in power of the ghost devil that stemmed from Jimeno's sacrifice is very apparent, as she was able to impale and immobilize Katana Man with a multitude of the ghost devil's arms, which made him resort to asking Akane Saratari for help, since he most likely would have died if things continued. And I personally wish we could have seen more applications of Jimeno's ghost devil power in the series, since for the most part she was just restarting Denji's engine, because her ability is very strong. Next we have Akane Sawatari who is a private sex devil hunter and an ally of the gun devil. Akane was tasked with a mission to retrieve Denji's heart with Katana Man and she proved to be a formidable enemy in the Katana Man arc. The devil she is contracted with is the snake devil and the snake devil contract she has has proven to be very powerful. She's able to use his power by sacrificing her fingernails as an exchange and with one of the applications of the snake devil's power, we saw her nose bleeding as a result. Some of the applications we've seen to Akane's power is using the snake devil to devour her enemies by saying swallow it whole, as we saw with the ghost devil during her battle against her meadow, forcing the snake devil to return back to where it came from after placing her hand on his head and saying return, getting the snake devil to spit out previously eaten devils and then being able to command said devil to battle for her and this ability completely rejuvenates the previously eaten devils to their original form which is a very strong ability to have, although it's unknown if Akane can do this with multiple devils at once and if a devil once absorbed and released can be stored again. However, that's something we'll probably never find out. And she can also command the snake devil to use different parts of his body to attack, but since it's a snake, it's really only the head or tail that's relevant to this, given the snake's anatomy. Oh yeah, and I forgot to mention she has to use different hand motions when using the snake devil's power. So taking into account all of this, I have Akane Saratari placed here on the list, and for those wondering what about Kobeni since she clearly bested Akane on two occasions, given the fact Kobeni has only shown her agility so far, I placed her below Akane on the list. Though I'm very sure she could kill her based on what we've seen so far, but since we only have insight on her speed and nothing else, I placed Kobeni lower. And if that gun didn't jam, Kobeni could have easily killed her in both encounters they had. And given what happened to Akane at the end, whether voluntarily or involuntarily, this is a fact. Next on the list we have Katana Man who is the main antagonist of the Katana Man arc and the second hybrid we see in the world of Chainsaw Man. While his real name is unknown, we know that Katana Man is the grandson of the mob boss we see during Chainsaw Man's prologue and Katana Man has more than enough motivation to kill Denji and retrieve his heart given the fact Denji killed his granddad and companions after they fell victim to the zombie devil. And looking at Katana Man honestly, he's just a ruthless, selfless individual with no regard for human life including his allies. Katana Man works together with Akane in their mission to retrieve Denji's heart and although it wasn't expanded on, we learned that Katana Man became a hybrid due to an arrangement he had with Akane Saratari that replaced his heart with the Katana Devil. So being a hybrid Katana Man is immortal and has the ability to transform into his hybrid Katana form. When transforming, the prerequisite for Katana Man is that he has to remove his hand which then reveals a Katana underneath as he undergoes his transformation. When he transforms, we see a long katana protruding from Katana Man's head and two katanas extending from his wrists. Katana Man has superhuman strength as a result of his transformation and he fights using his katanas to cut down his enemies. In regards to his abilities, Katana Man has one special move and this move of his is so powerful that Denji on two occasions complained about it, saying that it's unfair and that the move should be banned. And that's Katana Man's sword drawing move. When using this technique, Katana Man takes a crouching position and dashes forward at blinding speed while slashing his opponent in the process. And honestly, it's just the same as other sword draw techniques we see in animes and stuff, but I personally love the comments of it being unfair since when you usually see a stance or sword draw like that, someone is definitely getting packed up. And the reason I have Katana Man at this placement in my ranking is because obviously he is very strong, but I do think his obsession for revenge and arrogance in general blinds his judgement and makes him susceptible to being defeated. Honestly, Katana Man is very lucky he's a hybrid because at this point in the series, I'd say he comes across as inexperienced and definitely could be stronger. After Katana Man, we have the Violence Fiend, also known as Galgadi. 
Violence doesn't really have much to him except the fact he's explicitly stated to have extraordinary power, as even though he's a fiend, his power is the same as being a full-fledged devil. This is relevant as fiends tend to lose power when they steal human bodies as a devil, so violence is just an exception. And he's been theorized to have taken over the body of former Special Division 4 member Hirokazu Arai due to his facial appearance and his interactions with Kobeni. Anyway, his main form of combat is hand-to-hand -hand combat, he possesses immense physical strength, and can manipulate his body to display his increase in power. The Violet's Fiend's power is kept in check by the poison dispensing mask he wears, however when everyone was transported into hell, we got to see Violence's face and full power unleashed. When the mask is removed, we see that Violence has a face resembling our eyes, hence the comparison, and he has four eyes, his muscle mass increases drastically, and he becomes much more fierce. Unfortunately, we never got to see any results from his full power due to the quick manhandling he received from the Darkness Devil. But Violence was strong enough to survive an attack from the Darkness Devil that would have killed many others. And he made the Darkness Devil use another technique to take him out for good. So that definitely goes to show how tough the Violence Fiend is, hence why he's high on the list compared to the other devils on here. Next on the list we have Special Division 4's very own, the one and only Aki Hayakawa. And you know how to hype him up with the intro bit since he's my favourite in part 1. But Aki is a very capable devil hunter and one of the strongest humans present in the series. Fueled by the goal of revenge after his family was slaughtered by the Gun Devil, Aki joined public safety and eventually became one of the Special Division 4's leaders. Through his fights, we've seen that he's really well trained, given his superhuman reflexes and durability, and over the course of the series, he's contracted with a multitude of devils. The first devil contract Aki has is with the Fox Devil, and Aki is able to summon the Fox Devil's head to bite down on his target. And to initiate this power, Aki uses his fingers to form a hand sign that resembles a fox's head while saying the word Khan. His next devil contract is with the Cursed Devil, and Aki has the ability to instantly kill his enemy after striking them three times when using his sword that the Cursed Devil gave him. Each time he strikes the person he's trying to curse, he says the word fire, immediately summoning the Cursed Devil, who pushes a nail through his opponent while causing damage. The Cursed Devil Aki is contracted to also starts a countdown of how many hits are needed to activate the curse, and upon activation, the Cursed Devil fully manifests, forcing the target into a crucifix position while killing them in the process, and Aki has to pay a heavy price when using the Cursed Devil's power as his remaining lifespan is cut drastically every time he uses it, which is definitely a fair trade for such a strong power that allows you to kill someone after 3 hits, and it definitely suits someone like Aki who is willing to die as long as he reaches his end goal. The final devil Aki is contracted with is the future devil, and as you probably expect with Aki's contract, he is able to slightly see into the future when using the future devil's power. And in regards to the payment in exchange for the future devil's power, Aki only had to let the future devil live inside his right eye, which literally cost him nothing. But we learn later on that the reason for the future devil imposing such a meaningless payment on Aki for his powers was for self-serving reasons of amusement since we know devils seek the downfall of humanity at all times. And besides Aki's tenacity and willingness to get the job done at the cost of his own well-being, what makes him so strong is definitely the specific arrangement of devils he has. Being able to see into the future is insanely overpowered, and pairing that up with his curse technique, the fox, even though they are on good terms currently, and his honed battle skills, Aki is a serious threat for someone who is a human, hence why he got this spot on my list. Next up is a fan favourite, and it's Mr. I've got finals coming up but I'm still gonna hunt some devils himself, Hirofumi Yoshida. Now Yoshida is one of the few characters that we've seen in the series that belongs to the private sector devil hunters, also known as the civilian sector, and he was hired to protect Denji from the international assassins, which already says a lot about his capability given the threat at hand. And we also learn later on in part 2 that he's part of an unnamed organisation working to protect Denji, so there's still a lot of information that we have to learn about Yoshida and his ties in the story, since we didn't really learn that much from part 1 outside of the fact he's a devil hunter still in high school, and is very strong and thorough. In addition to this, he's very professional while being calm and collected, as seen with the way he searched for and disposed of the second oldest brother assassin, Joey from America, immediately after the eldest brother was killed by power, driving Kobeni's car. In regards to his abilities, Yoshida is shown to be very proficient in hand-to-hand -hand combat, being able to go one-on-one -on -one with Kuang Shi and land a few good hits here and there, even though he's still lost. And this is especially impressive given the statement made earlier in the series by Kishibe, saying that if the entirety of humanity came together and held a bare knuckle fighting tournament, Kuang Shi would take first place. So props to Yoshida, especially with him being so young. However, outside his insane physical capabilities, he has a contract with the Octopus Devil. And while the price for his contract remains unknown, the abilities he's displayed with Octopus is being able to summon his tentacles to aid in battle by crossing his fingers. Also, he can spray the Octopus Devil's ink to use as a smoke screen of sorts to try and confuse his enemies. And when doing this, he says the words ink. And for these reasons, Yoshida is placed at 11th on this list. 
and just going a bit off topic, I'm still holding on to the theory of him and Kashibe sharing some sort of relation due to their interactions and appearances and I wouldn't be surprised if in the future we learn he's also contracted with the Knife Devil if them being related is true because the way he pulled out that knife during the encounter with Kongshi, it didn't seem like he just had one on him but that's just me. Now kicking off the top 10 we have the Angel Devil next on this list and I promise this character is very interesting outside of the clear oxymoron of him being the Angel Devil but in his words he's a devil first and then an angel after. The angel devil is stated by Makima to be the second strongest hunter in special division 4 behind Kishibe or at least he would be if he actually applied himself and wasn't lazy and I cannot stress how lazy the angel devil actually is, he would rather die than being forced to work and I can't lie I'm a lazy guy myself but he's just another level. Anyway, outside of the typical abilities associated with devils, the angel devil's abilities are mainly based off the foundation of his lifespan absorption. By simply touching a person, the angel devil can absorb their lifespan. And this isn't a thing where he controls whether or not he's going to absorb a person's lifespan, it's been shown to be automatic. An example of this is when Aki grabbed his hand to save him from the typhoon devil's attack and he lost 2 months of his lifespan instantly, which further goes to show how dangerous the angel devil is. And of course, if he touches someone long enough, then they will eventually die once he's taken their whole lifespan. The Angel Devil is also able to create weapons through his halo by using the lifespans he's absorbed. And the way it works is that the more lifespan used to create a weapon, the more powerful it will be, which is to be expected. In this series, we've seen Angel say 5 years usage, which spawns a sword that is created in exchange for 5 years of his collected lifespans, and this sword was strong enough to take down multiple doors at once. There was also a 10 years sword he created which naturally would be stronger but we really can't speak on its effects as he tried to use it on Makima who quickly took him out before we could see what would happen. There was also an 100 year sword which Angel made while being controlled and an 1000 years spear which was also made while Angel was being controlled and it was powerful enough to put Chainsaw Man also known as Pochita out of commission. And outside of his lifespan ability, Angel's wings are strong enough to deflect bullets showing he's very durable and has a good balance of defense and offense. And even though he's insanely lazy, I think he's definitely shown enough, whether he wanted to or not, to display why he's at number 10 on this ranking. Coming in at number 9, we have the one and only Blood Fiend of Special Division 4, Power. Power is a close friend of Denji's, and with Power being the Blood Fiend, her abilities revolve around her manipulating her blood and using it in battle. Which can be a double edged sword at times, given the fact devils use blood to use certain abilities, Power will be using more than others given her skill set, which makes her more likely to be anemic. And not only can she manipulate her own blood, but she can manipulate others although it's much harder to do as we saw with Aki and Himeno. Power can create weapons from her blood such as hammers and spears for example and she can power up significantly after drinking or absorbing blood from other devils. Although when this happens, Power's horns increase in size and she becomes not only stronger but much more fierce, hence why Makima makes Power drain her blood periodically. And outside of her blood related abilities, Power also has a heightened sense of smell and she's pretty agile, though more times she uses her agility and speed to flee from battle rather than to fight. And since power is a fiend it means that she took over the corpse of a human when she was a devil and as a result of this her abilities are much weaker than when she was just a blood devil. However, power is one of the few fiends in the series that are able to undergo a full devil transformation. During the control devil arc we see power consuming Pochita and reviving in her true blood devil form. Once she transformed, Power was able to hold back Makima and her subordinates by herself while protecting Denji for a period of time, which is an insane feat in itself given how strong Makima is. And in this form, Power can manifest a large amount of weapons instantaneously inside her enemies. And her Thousand Blood Terror technique was strong enough to prevent Makima's attack and hold her back for a couple seconds. So the small display we got to see of Power's true strength as the Blood Devil is the main reason why she's placed here on the list, since she would easily be able to take down others on this list at full strength and if it wasn't Makima she was going up against then I'm sure we would have seen her in a much better circumstance. And I don't think we saw it through power directly but we know that power's blood is able to run amok inside other devils and slow down the healing process they undergo. So she's honestly a good counter to every devil in the series given who this worked on. And I definitely think in this form she could take down Angel by preventing him from unleashing his weapons, hence why I have her above him in the list despite him being such having the potential to be the second strongest in special division 4. And a little side note, Power is definitely one of the ones on the list who I'm a bit iffy about in terms of those who are going to come after her, mainly due to how limited, time wise, her form was and the fact that it was due to the consumption of Pochita. I still think that even though she was able to hold back Makima to an extent and her subordinates, she would fall short against those who are more durable and have better regenerative powers over time. 
especially given the fact that most of her damage was taken by Rika foes and the blood she was expending to launch those attacks. Next up at number 8 we have the bomb hybrid Reze. Reze was sent by the Soviet Union in an attempt to retrieve Chainsaw Man's heart and she was also an ally of the Gun Devil. Reze is introduced to us during the bomb girl arc and becomes a love interest of Denji so to speak as she attempts to get close to him so she can complete her mission. Reze is one of the most experienced hybrids we've seen in Chainsaw Man in terms of using her abilities and she initially comes across as rather playful although when she drops her act we see the cold ruthlessness that she possesses which is a result of her training in the Soviet Union since she was a child. And as I mentioned earlier Reze is one of the most experienced hybrids we've seen and she has a good understanding and awareness of what she can do with her powers and its applications which is honestly what I think makes her more of the most dangerous hybrids outside of the raw power she possesses being the bomb hybrid. Reze also has exceptional physical strength as she was able to choke out and kill the serial killer human male that was working with the typhoon devil. He tried to capture Reze and use her as leverage to get Denji's heart but things didn't work out the way that he expected. Reze has a bomb pin on her neck that she pulls off to undergo her hybrid transformation. After she pulls the pin an explosion goes off and she appears in her hybrid form. This is her main method of transforming but we also saw an instance when she blew her head off her body and used her headless body to throw her head like a grenade and when her head explodes she can instantly regenerate and transform while controlling the severed body for a short period of time. Though it could be much longer but since she used the body to blow up someone instantly it's up to speculation. But once she's in her transformed state Reze's power significantly increases and she has a wide range of abilities. Reze can self detonate different parts of her body which allows her to use her explosions in a variety of ways. She can also delay her explosions, cause explosions from any part of her body and through this method she can increase her speed and mobility drastically. And needless to say but her explosions can act as an amplifier for all of her attacks so she packs quite a punch. We've also seen that she can use her explosions like a projectile by flicking her fingers and once the spark hits her target it explodes instantly. And taking into account that Reze is a hybrid, a lot of her abilities are practical as she can regenerate providing she has enough blood. And last but not least Reze can transform her arms and legs into torpedoes that significantly increases her destructive capability. When using this technique she was able to absolutely manhandle Denji and cause massive damage to the surrounding area although it does seem to take quite a bit out of her. With that being said I think it's pretty self explanatory as to why Reze is so high on the list. She's not only insanely strong, she's very smart when it comes to battle and using her powers so as a hybrid who is basically immortal she's able to make the most of her destructive powers and outside of her weakness which is water there's not much many can do against her unless they caught her by surprise. Coming in at number 7 we have the strongest devil hunter in Tokyo's public safety special division 4, Kishibe. Kishibe is the strongest human devil hunter we've come across in Chainsaw Man and he was initially introduced in the series to train power and Denji so they can be strong enough to combat the threats in the Katana Man arc. When Kishibe was younger he was teamed up with Kuang Shi who is known as the first devil hunter and we see that as time progressed in their team up the brazen Kishibe who had an interest in Kuang Shi over time received more injuries while in the field and definitely became less energetic and lively which naturally would come about with age but also ties in with the fact Kishibe said the best devil hunters are the ones with a few loose screws and after his excessive drinking over the years this came about to be the same for him. Also the losses of his friends and trauma would have naturally contributed to this as well. Kishibe is contracted with the claw devil, the knife devil and the needle devil and as stated by Pinksy he's contracted with some rather dangerous devils. So even though we haven't got real insight into how his abilities with said devils work we know that they are definitely powerful. And we also don't know what he uses to contract with them but it was stated that he doesn't have much left to offer for contracts. Now although in the series Kasibe wasn't necessarily defeated by Kuang Shi but fallen out of a high building by her, I don't think this takes anything away from him given Kuang Shi's reputation and the fact she's a hybrid. And it's also clear that he still has feelings for her as friends so it's clear neither side was going all out when they were fighting. Kishibe has displayed extraordinary strength, durability and reflexes for a human given how easily he was able to take down and counter power and Denji and how he was able to survive being thrown out of a building. Given the fact we still haven't seen much of Kishibe although we know his reputation I definitely would say it's his knowledge and experience in the devil hunting field that makes him a big threat. He knows exactly what's required of being a devil hunter and he's able to execute his job efficiently despite his old age due to his experience. Coming in at number 6 we have the first devil hunter and the crossbow hybrid Kuang Shi. Kuang Shi is one of the devil hunters hailing from China to kill Denji during the international assassins arc and she is easily one of the fastest and strongest characters in Chainsaw Man. Kuang Shi leads a group of fiends who are also her girlfriends and as I mentioned earlier at one point in time her and Kishibe were partnered up so despite how young she looks she's got to be at least over 50 years of age at this point in the series but her power is still immense. 
In her base form, Kuang Shi was able to speed blitz every single devil hunter and doll within the vicinity and decapitate their head or slice their face or bodies in half. Nobody was able to react to her attack except Aki who can literally see into the future and even then he was barely able to block the attack and he was blown backwards alongside the angel devil upon impact, which is just insane given that she's still in human form. And then she proceeded to defeat all of Denji's bodyguards one by one before Kishibe appeared forcing her to sit down for a little. So nothing more really needs to be said about Kuang Shi in her human form, I guess outside of the fact Kishibe said in a bare knuckle fighting tournament, if the whole of humanity came together she would win. So she's not only got the speed, she has the strength to back it up and the experience given she's known as the first devil hunter. So even in her base form she's insanely strong. In regards to her other abilities, Kuang Shi is the crossbow hybrid. So with the crossbow devil's power, Kuang Shi can shoot arrows from her crossbow arms which allows her to defeat a large amount of enemies all at once and naturally this form boosts her other attributes as well. And her transformation requires her to pull an arrow out of her right eye socket which begins the transformation and is probably why she wears the eye patch. So Kuang Shi is really well rounded in terms of battle, speed, strength, range, durability, just everything really. And given the fact she's a hybrid and hybrids are practically immortal, she's literally the full package and only a few in this list can actually go toe to toe with her, which is why I have her place at this spot in the list. Okay, so the next person I have on this list is a huge spoiler and even though this entire video has contained spoilers and I put that disclaimer at the beginning, I'll just leave a couple seconds before I get into this character. Okay, so that should be enough time, but the next person we have on this list is the Gum Fiend, also known as Aki Hayakawa or Aki 47. That's kind of messed up what I just did. Anyway, after the incident with the Gun Devil, the Gun Devil took over Aki's corpse and therefore we have the Gum Fiend. As the Gum Fiend, Aki has a gun protruding through the middle of his head and the gun replacing his left arm, which are surprisingly durable, being able to block Denji's chainsaws on multiple occasions. Furthermore, even though fiends are much weaker than their original devil forms, Aki's destructive power and speed as the gun fiend is made very evident by the damage he caused to the surrounding area with his bullets. He can let off shots at blinding speeds and they pack quite a punch. And given how fresh the gun fiend was and the fact he's the fiend of one of the most feared and powerful devils, the gun devil, it was only right to have him here on this list, especially given the fact he was fighting pretty much end of series Denji and managed to force him to go all out. Taking into account the childishness attached to the gun fiend shown through her infant Aki, I think if the gun fiend had more direction, awareness and motive, the fight between him and Denji could have turned out way different. Because let's be honest, the gun fiend was really just shooting whatever was in his sight for the most part. Coming in at number 4 we have the MC himself Denji, also known as Chainsaw Man. And for this we're only going to be taking into account his human and hybrid form since I think it makes more sense to look at it that way. Denji is the devil hunter under public safety's Tokyo Special Division 4 and he is the chainsaw hybrid meaning he has a contract with the chainsaw devil, Pochita. So with Denji due to him being a hybrid, he has the ability to turn into a chainsaw devil by putting the cord in his chest. This is the prerequisite for him to transform, so without him putting his cord he can't use any of his devil abilities which has definitely been a problem for him many many times but once he pulls his cord, Denji transforms and chainsaws appear on various parts of his body. Denji's abilities as Chainsaw Man are rather basic in comparison to the other hybrids we've seen, he doesn't really have too many applications to his power outside of the boost in all of his physical capabilities, he really just swings his chainsaws and cuts up whatever's in his path while using his unique thinking to outwit the enemy. Denji is able to retract his chainsaws and they appear on all of his limbs and his head. In addition to this he can use his chains to move and he can disconnect the chain from his chainsaws to tangle and wrap up his opponents. And we also did see Denji use a blood chainsaw made from Power's blood which allows him to disrupt the regeneration of devils he cuts using Power's blood manipulation, although this was a one time use. Though Denji hasn't been Chainsaw Man for too long, he's proven time and time again he can rise to the occasion. After being trained by Kishibe, his powers and battle capability increased significantly and taking into account all the people Denji has bested, he definitely deserves the fourth spot on this list. Well personally, I would say it's his unpredictability and craziness that definitely edges him over many others and I guess the fact that the Chainsaw Devil is heavily feared by devils which directly contributes to his strength. But for the main part, it's just as Kishibe said, it's the devil hunters with a few loose screws that devils fear and Denji fits the role perfectly. Now before we get into the top 3, I wanted to give a brief mention of some characters that I didn't put on this list due to the fact there was a lack of information or minimal display of their capabilities. So first we have the weapon humans outside of Reze, Kuang Shi and Katana Man. We honestly don't know all that much for me to even try and give a specific ranking, heck we don't even know their names, but if we do get more info in the future, they most definitely would be around the level of the other hybrids. 
And the other person I wanted to mention was Asami Taka, who is contracted with the War Devil Yoru. As you can imagine, with her being contracted with one of the Horsemen Devils that fought Chainsaw Man, she's going to be insanely strong. But we just haven't seen enough yet, and from the little we did see, she does seem to be rather broken. And I think I could confidently say that whenever we do see and learn more, I think she would easily clear the top 5 in terms of the current list for Devil Hunters. But coming in at number 3, we have Germany's Santa Claus. Now, Santa Claus is one of the most dangerous Devil Hunters in the series due to the vast range of contracts he has. And even when I'm saying she, it's still ambiguous to say that this is the true form of Santa Claus, as we know Santa Claus' a contract with the Doll Devil allows Santa Claus to possess many different bodies, and as said by Santa Claus themselves, anyone can become the assassin known as Santa Claus. But from the narrative and for the sake of the video, this is Santa Claus. So Santa Claus has a multitude of devil contracts that all make her very dangerous and unpredictable. She has the contract with the doll devil which allows her to create dolls by touching people and it works in a contagious manner as to where if a doll touches someone who isn't a doll, they turn into dolls. So Santa Claus has a massive army of dolls. Also I should mention this technique only works on humans. Santa Claus can control all her dolls as she wishes and the dolls have been shown to have other abilities like being able to transform their hands into blades to fight and Santa Claus can also transfer her mind between all of the dolls she possesses around the world which she stated before getting hit by Cosmo's full power Halloween attack. Now outside of the basic dolls Santa Claus creates, she can also create perfect dolls which can serve to be sort of stand-ins to Santa Claus being able to undergo contracts on Santa's behalf and having the doll devil take over as their conscious if not being directly controlled by Santa as seen by Toka and the older Santa Claus. The next devil Santa Claus is contracted with is the cursed devil. The cursed devil's power allows Santa to instantly kill a target after stabbing them with a nail four times which is pretty self-explanatory but the only twist to this is that the stabbing doesn't necessarily have to be done by Santa Claus as seen by her entrusting the final stab to Toka. And upon the final hit, Denji was put into a crucifix position and died although he would revive later on. And as a prize for this, Santa lost a sensation in a few of her fingers. Another one of the devils that Santa has a contract with is the Hell Devil. And with this contract, Santa is able to transport living beings into Hell after naming the specific location they are in. With this, she was able to send the special division and Quang Shi squad into Hell instantly. And this is an insanely powerful contract and obviously required a hefty price. Santa sacrificed three children she owned given to her by the German government for this contract and her grandpa doll to use the Hell Devil's power to transport her wanted targets to Hell. And simply put, this is a very strong and beneficial power since Hell is where the scariest and strongest devils reside. For example, being the primal devils who have never died once in the cycle, so sending your target to Hell is pretty much a guaranteed way to get rid of them in most circumstances. Now last but not least, Santa has a contract with the Darkness Devil which is one of the primal devils that I was mentioning a second ago. After consuming the Darkness Devil's flesh, Santa Claus's abilities, contracts and just everything were amplified by a huge amount. Furthermore, she underwent a grotesque transformation that looks like many dolls pieced together which allowed her body to use the power of the darkness efficiently. Once she gained an understanding of the darkness, she was able to regenerate in the dark, distribute pain between her dolls and she gains a boost in power during the night, making her not only more powerful but scarier too. She was able to fight both a transform Kuang Shi and Denji and the only apparent weakness Santa has is light which is pretty cliche. Even taking this weakness into account, Santa Claus is still insanely broken and given the fact she had to be defeated by Cosmo's insane technique just goes to show that Santa Claus is a huge problem. And even though Denji defeated her, I still have Santa Claus as being way stronger than him since her abilities are way more than what Denji could handle on his own. He was very lucky that there was a way to produce light around at the time so his victory was literally based on a situational circumstance and he didn't really take down Santa for good because as she said anyone can instantly become Santa Claus. If it wasn't for Cosmo's ability, they all would have been screwed if we are being completely honest. Now coming in at number 2 we have the infamous Makima. Now boy do I have a lot to say about her. Makima is found out later on in the series to be one of the four horsemen as she's the control devil who embodies the fear of control. Makima is insanely powerful and her abilities and personality correlate with each other perfectly. Her powers are honestly so vast and have so many applications to them but at face value she can control others that she feels are inferior to her, she can literally make them do anything, she can forcefully make humans undergo a contract with her if they are under her control. She has a contract with the Prime Minister where in exchange for her working for Japan, she is literally invincible since any injury that would be fatal towards Makima is converted into an illness or disease that then gets inflicted onto a random Japanese citizen. She can control and use the contracts of people who are both dead and alive. She can borrow the hearing of lower life forms and though never specified this is likely through an application of her control ability, she can instantly teleport to a location through rats that form the gateway for her to pass through 
and she also did something similar with Prince. And Makima can also kill people by crushing them with an invisible force, though this specific technique requires a human sacrifice. And the name of the target she wants to be killed has to be uttered by said sacrifice, paired with using various hand signs to perform the attack. In addition to this, Makima also has this technique where she points with her index finger and then the target is inflicted with damage. Makima also used this technique in succession which resulted in her enemy being sent all the way up into space which speaks for itself really. And she also used it to severely damage the darkness devil. Outside of Makima's crazy techniques, she's also proficient in hand to hand combat and she has a keen sense of smell. And for these reasons I have Makima at number 2 on this list which I'm sure everyone can agree on. Like is Makima, come on now. Now last but not least taking the number 1 spot, we do not have Kobeni's car for those who are waiting that's a whole different tier list, but we have Chainsaw Man himself, the hero of hell, the Chainsaw Devil, Pochita. Now Pochita may look very innocent and friendly to a degree, I mean as friendly as a Chainsaw Dog Devil can be, but his true devil form is a completely different story. When Denji broke his contract with Pochita, we get to see Pochita's true devil form as he takes over and it speaks for itself really. Pochita is the devil that devils fear most and he has a reputation in hell for his power and chaoticness. He was so strong that the four horsemen teamed up against him with the weapon devils in an attempt to kill him but he managed to end up escaping heavily injured and ended up in the form we see at the start of the series with Denji. Though in this weakened form, the most we saw him do is having his tail pulled by Denji which activates Pochita's chainsaw on his head. Pochita is a major target for all devils due to his reputation and his insane powers, be it out of fear or worship. Pochita is well known in both worlds by the devils, which is why during this series all the devils were seeking Chainsaw Man's heart for whatever reason. Pochita possesses the unique ability, to which I think it's safe to say is the most broken ability in the entire series, and that is Devil Erasure. Any devil that Pochita eats is erased from existence, which is more than enough reason for every devil to be scared of him. Pochita can do everything that Denji can in his hybrid form but literally on steroids. His raw power exceeds everything we've seen from anyone else in the series and this was shown when Pochita was able to completely bully the weapon devils and Makima during the fight in the control devil arc. Like the guy literally went on a date mid fight. His healing and regeneration is on a completely different level as seen by him tearing off his heart and throwing it back into the atmosphere when sent into space by Makima and then instantly regenerating and fighting again after. Pochita also made easy work of the hell devil and returned unscathed from hell. And prior to meeting Denji, Pochita was constantly fighting off hordes of devils in hell by himself, said to be revving his engine over and over again and then fighting. And we also need to take into consideration the insane power Pochita displayed during the control devil arc, despite being significantly weakened by Makima, who turned Chainsaw Man into a thing of public interest and support, which effectively reduced his devil power as he wasn't being feared and fear directly contributes to a devil's power. But with that being said, we have come to the end of the video. And whew, I'm not gonna lie, this was definitely a long video, the longest video I've ever done in this channel to date. But I hope you guys enjoyed my reasoning for the rankings of all these characters. And if you did, be sure to leave a like down below and subscribe to the channel for more Chainsaw Man content. Also, be sure to let me know your own list and ranking when it comes to the Devil Hunters in Chainsaw Man, as well as any parts where you may have agreed or disagreed with me in the video. And I'll be sure to comment back as much as I can. And one last thing, if you want to see me do a similar video for all the devils in Chainsaw Man since this time was the Devil Hunters, let's hit 500 likes on this video and I'll get it done eventually. If this is your first time tuning into the channel, I have loads more Chainsaw Man videos on the channel that you can check out after this one, like these ones on the screen right now. And yeah, with that out of the way, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.